President Zelensky, Volodymyr Zelensky, yesterday, um, you probably heard this, he issued a dire appeal for help. Because what Putin is ordering Russian troops to do across Ukraine is war crime after war crime. Thermobaric weapons, cluster bombs, fire bombs. I mean, this is just fucking horrible what's going on. And still, the United States, still, Western Europe, is not responding. Not in the way necessary. And I... I, I, I hate to have to deal with the reality of what is necessary. I can't stand dealing with the reality of what I think is necessary to stop this monster. Of course, his murder, his immediate murder, what the hell is wrong with the Russian high command? It took 30 years for, for Russia to build up the kind of financial and, and export arrangements that they have with the West. And this monster, Putin, destroyed all of it in one week. I, I, I mean, how much more of this are the people in Russia going to tolerate before they murder this son of a bitch, drag him into the streets, rip him to pieces, Am I saying that? Yeah. Zelensky had a televised news conference in Kiev. You may have seen it yesterday. Uh, supposedly it was in, the, um, in a bomb shelter of some sort. But he said, quote, the end of the world has arrived. End quote. The end of the world has arrived. Is that just a... Uh, a reference to what is going on in Ukraine? It certainly is true there. The end of the world in Ukraine has arrived. But if you're paying attention, you know that Zelensky's comment is not hyperbole. He, in that press conference, he p appealed to Western leaders who, who have said no about setting up a no-fly zone over Ukraine. He said, quote, if you don't have the power to close the skies, then give me planes, end quote. And still no response. Zelensky also called for direct negotiations between Vladimir Putin and and him, Zelensky, this is what he said, quote, refer, addressing the, the monster Putin. Zelensky said, quote, good Lord, what do you want? Leave our land. If you don't want to leave now, sit down with me at the negotiating table, but not from 30 meters, meters away, like with uh, French President Macron and German Chancellor Schultz. That 30 meter, uh, end quote, that 30 meters line uh, is a reference to the lengthy table that Putin uses for meetings with foreign leaders and his own advisors because he knows, I think part of him knows, that there is a, a desire to kill him, a global desire to kill him, to assassinate him, to end his life, to send him on to Russian Orthodox hell or wherever uh, he believes he might wind up. He needs to be killed. Zelensky added, still addressing Putin, sit down with me and talk. What are you afraid of? We're no threat to anyone. End quote. I just have a feeling that Zelensky is the type of man who, if he got a, a, an agreement with Putin to meet, Zelensky would have a explosive device, device taped to his body, and when he got close enough to Putin, he would pull the trigger. Well, it's Friday, and by this point, Russian forces, under the direction of this monster, has encircled how many cities in Kiev now? And the attack on uh, the, ca uh, I'm sorry, how many cities in Ukraine have been encircled? Kiev being one of them, the capital. And the destruction that's going on there is just, uh, it, it's just heartbreaking. You know, what, what Putin is doing to Ukraine, 
is affecting me on, on a surprising level. It's surprising to me. But when you spend a lot of time on these little intimate tours of, of these, and he and, and Benjamin doesn't take you to the big city. He does spend some time in big cities, but he takes you to little villages, villages in Ukraine. It's astonishing. Villages in Russia. And you get a feel for what the country is about, what the people are about. And then comes this monster, Putin. Sit down with me and talk. What are you afraid of, Zelensky said. The New York Times reported in the middle of the week, just past that Russian troops had seized Kherson. Is that how you pronounce it? That was the first major Ukrainian city to fall to the monster Putin since the beginning of the invasion. Zelensky's office denied that report. They said the, the, the port city was, the battle was ongoing. That city is on the Black Sea. It's a seaport. In Kiev and Kharkiv, the two largest population centers in Ukraine, the battles continue to rage. These outnumbered Ukrainian troops, outnumbered, they're outsupplied. They have mounted a ferocious response. You see ordinary citizens throwing Molotov cocktails. God damn it, how, how much longer are, are we going to sit on the sidelines of this? I'm beginning to feel what must have been the feelings in this country um, after Hitler invaded Poland in 1939, and it became apparent that he was not going to stop. Czechoslovakia, Austria, Hungary, country after country invaded by the Nazis, and it took an attack by the Japanese two years later, more than two years later before the United States was willing to engage with this monster, Hitler, and how much death and destruction could have been avoided. It was a different era then. There were no nuclear weapons. How easy would it have been to kill Hitler? To just blow the son of a bitch into oblivion. How difficult it now is to kill Putin, to blow him into oblivion. That's why I say it's going to take Russians to do it. Please, would somebody in Russia kill this son of a bitch? <sighs> Zelensky, of course, vowed to continue to defend his nation, and he continued to plead with NATO countries to help. He said, quote, If we are no more, then, God forbid, Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia will be next. End quote. The Baltic countries. He knows. Zelensky knows. And meanwhile, in this country, we still have filth. People who should be have their citizenship taken away, who are support Americans, who are supporting what Putin is doing. Jesus Christ. The uh, fire at Europe's largest nuclear power plant was finally put out today after Russian shelling of this nuclear, attacking a fucking nuclear power plant. That's what set it ablaze and, and caused the international community to fear a nuclear disaster greater than anything imagined at Chernobyl, which is also in Ukraine. And according to um, people that can be trusted to give a report and that does not mean anybody associated with the Russian government, but no radiation has been released. And I guess it's the Zaporizhia, Zaporizhia nuclear plant. A Russian missile hit a training center that, according to uh, the UN Atomic Watchdog Agency, this training center, quote, is not part of the reactor, end quote. And... This this nuclear power plant sits near a, a village of, an, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I can't pronounce these Russian names. I can't do it. But the mayor of that city, Dmitry Orlov, I can pronounce some of the uh, names of the people. 
But Mayor Orlov told the Associated Press that Ukrainian firefighters were allowed to go and fight the fire overnight, last night to today, and that this power plant's Ukrainian staff remains in control of the reactor, according to uh, the head of the UN Atomic Watchdog Agency. Uh, However... Ukrainian officials have said Russian troops took control of the site. Only one reactor is operating at this site at around 60% capacity, according to reports about the condition of this reactor. Who knows? Um, The company that operates this nuclear plant said three Ukrainian soldiers were killed and two wounded in the missile attack by the Russians. And, of course, the, uh, the fire caused fears of a disaster similar in part to what happened at Chernobyl in 1986, uh, which occurred about 65 miles north of Kiev. Ukraine's Minister of Foreign Affairs uh, tweeted, Regarding what is the, this new fire, he tweeted, quote, if it blows up, it will be 10 times larger than Chernobyl, end quote. And President Zelensky renewed his call for a no-fly zone. He called the shelling of the power plant, quote, terror on an unprecedented level, end quote. Oh, my God. So... We are into the second week of the invasion now by this monster Putin. You know, the, the, the nuclear power plant that the Russians bombed um, Thursday night, early Friday, today. It's Europe's largest nuclear power plant. And it caused the fire and, and raised the fears of a disaster that could affect all of Central Europe for decades. I, I mean, this is not, this is one of the arguments against nuclear power is that an insane son of a bitch who needs to be killed, like Vladimir Putin, could do something like this, would deliberately and consciously try to blow up a nuclear power plant. Putin does not give a fuck about human life. That's the reason, one of the reasons, that he needs to be shot. He needs to be dragged to the nearest wall and shot. He doesn't care about human life or any kind of life except his own. Hi, Truth Seekers. Mike Malloy here. As you know, we've switched formats and are now broadcast exclusively on the Progressive Voices Network. So that means you get fewer program interruptions, no corporate commercials, and lots of profanity. But our format change also means some of our radio listeners no longer hear the program. It's been a while since I mentioned our podcasts. So you may have forgotten that there is a way to listen to this program anytime you need a good dose of screaming. Visit MikeMalloy.com and subscribe to our podcast. As a podcast subscriber, you can download the program to your mobile device and take me with you wherever you go. And if you have a friend who needs a dose of truth-seeking, you can give a gift subscription as well. That's MikeMalloy.com and never miss a minute of the uncensored fun and frivolity.